I, I could tell I was tired. Like, my body was exhausted. I mean, you know, one slam is just so much impact, and to think that I was doing that for so long. So I really took time to take care of myself, you know. Started working out more, starting to eat healthier, and then when I came back, I just felt so much better. I feel like I was in a much better mental state. I feel like I was excited and, like, stoked to be there again, which I feel like I hadn't felt in a couple years. Unleashed with the Dingo and Danny, fueled by Monster Energy. Danny, you good? Yeah, I'm good. Are you plugged in? I'm plugged in. I got so the you... headphones on. Do I look weird with the headphones on? Or? <laughs> he decided yeah. to go headphones. We decided not to go headphones, and you decided to go headphones. Missed the memo. Well, I just, I really like to hear the sound of my own voice. You do? <laughs> well, I can actually, it's like the first time you can hear it when you have your headphones on. How do I sound? You sound great. How does Chloe Kim sound? Let's see. Uh, I don't know. You can't. You can't see how someone Hi. says she, she. She looks great. Hi. <laughs> she sounds great too. You look great, Chloe. I don't know how you sound. Thank you. I don't know either. So we have Chloe Kim on today. I was thinking like, the first time I met you was with Steve Aoki, and we had the airbag at Mammoth, and you taught Steve. You were teaching Steve Aoki how to do flips into the bag, or you were giving him pointers. Yeah. Do you remember that? I do. That was a minute ago. I was like 13. You were so young. So young. And uh, you've come a long way since then. Yeah, it's you, been uh, pretty wild. Life's been crazy since then. I feel like that was like the start of your... You were Chloe Kim, like people knew who you were. But people didn't know that you were about to become Chloe Kim. Yeah, it was before the explosion for sure. <laughs> Well, I'd say, as I'm sitting here looking at two snowboard Olympians, I'm going to go ahead and say that she almost ended up being the most famous snowboarding Olympian we've had of all time. Well, for good reason. Because she I looks mean, good? Well, also, you know, she had time to perfect her craft, you know? Maybe people had to lay down some big tricks in the beginning to make them seem more doable. Yeah, I don't know. I I wasn't expecting it, but I think Danny definitely was and is one of my favorite snowboarders. So I don't know if I agree with you on that because I feel like a lot of people say, feel the same way about me, about Danny, as I do. Um, but I don't know. Fame is weird. <laughs> it's pretty cool. Well, we can get into that. <laughs> but, like, it's pretty cool because, you know, you grew up in South Bay Torrance. Um, so like Mammoth ended up being your local. Did you, where did you, did you start snowboarding like Mountain High, Big Bear somewhere first? Yeah, I started at Mountain High and I remember my dad would take me after school. So at, he would pick me up from school at like 2.30 and we'd go to Mountain High and hit McDonald's on the way and then go to Mountain High and I'd snowboard from like 4.30 to 8 and then I'd go back home. Pretty wild. Man, my my experience was different. I used to hit swimming training and hit McDonald's. I didn't get to hit that high. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. remember the McDonald's? Were you into that, that? Was it the Happy Meal? You Happy get in the Meal. the box with the toy? Happy Meal, the toy, the cool. nuggies. So good. Danny didn't have that in Jersey. They just had Taylor Ham. They had like a makeshift McDonald's. <laughs> yeah, no, for us it was different. I think it was like uh, the birth of Boston Market and skate parks. That was cool. Do you know what I've been thinking about, you know, because I knew that I was going to be sitting here looking at you two. It's like kind of crazy that Mammoth Lakes has birthed so many superstars within snowboarding in so many different areas, right, over generations now. And I feel like, you know, Danny coming from, I wouldn't say you were first generation Mammoth, but like first, like transplant generation, right? It's like... Yeah, definitely like kind of kind of first second wave of like the real east coast invasion to the california like snowboard scene you know and mammoth just like from you know the late 90s early 2000s just put everything into making a great snowboard park and it just brought people out from all over you know 
I think the sun and the sun and the fun just really had like a whole different training from us coming from the East Coast. Did where you just was, say sun and the fun? Yeah. Well, it's California, so there was there was fun to be had also. Yeah. But oh I feel like. My God. Did you have sun? Do you think of mammoth? Do you think of sun and the fun? Is that like a tongue twister? How did you even get that out? Sun and fun. Sun and fun. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, I think, you know, like Danny said, mammoth just always put so much love and a lot of work into their parks. And I think that's why you see so many really good, talented, young, up and coming snowboarders coming from Mammoth because they do that and the weather is amazing and the vibes are great. I love Schatz Bakery. I don't know if that's how you say it. It's yeah. Schatz. Or oh, Schatz. Oh, yeah. Schatz. 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 Yeah. That's the best sandwich ever. The best. Oh. Ever. Have you noticed that the sandwiches are better at the one in Mammoth than the yes, one in Bishop? Yes, absolutely. Because you know we both went to high school in Mammoth, right? You did? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Together? Uh, he's a little bit older than me. Oh, okay. But I slept on his couch when um, I, uh, he actually. I think I went to school and Dingo went to school dances or something. <laughs> I was living on his couch when I quit. I, I showed up one day. It was Nate Bosong and, and Danny drove me to uh, the. It was the the homeschool program they had in, yeah. in Mammoth, and it was about. It was in the high school. It was in the college at that time. Yeah. Did you go to that school? I not the college one. I think Saracoso or whatever it's yeah. called. That one. Yeah. No, I never went there. But I, the Mammoth school is like in trailers, so I would go to that one for a little bit. But. I was never really there because I was so busy competing. And that was high school, right? High school, yep. And then... Isn't that the dream? Like, you know, you think about kids that have to go to regular high school and Mammoth has a school that we don't even really go to. We went to once a week, picked up our work, and then just <laughs> snowboarded or traveled, and then handed in our work if we did or we didn't. Yeah, no, I mean, honestly, the principal was so chill with me because I think they got a lot more strict recently just you're not allowed to miss class during the week but you can do whatever on the weekends like I don't really know how it went but she was so chill with me just leaving and like doing my assignments from home because she knew I was like at x games or do tour or whatever and yeah but it was chill I had a good time <laughs> that's cool because Danny, Danny actually graduated like a year and a half after his original graduation well yeah I mean it kind of was like this 2001 season and I started doing really well in all the competitions I literally didn't come back to school for like three or four months and then it was like all right you know I really like didn't need to finish it but then I really wanted to like surprise my mom for Christmas so I went back and didn't tell her and then I finished like my whole senior year and gave her my diploma for Christmas that's pretty sick yeah did you go to prom I've never been to one prom. Same. No, I've like one of those things I've always really missed out on, I feel like. Yeah. It's like I've never really got to live that uh, that teenage like American fantasy style of prom. You've been to prom, Ding? No? Uh, I went to a high school dance. I got in trouble. Why? I was, I was, I was drunk. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> but in his defense, he was 25. <laughs> And probably dating a teacher. <laughs> oh my god! So like it's yeah. So so growing up with Mammoth, was it always gonna be half pot for you, or was it like it, it, it always was? That yeah. Was just, you were just naturally better at it then. Oh yeah. Oh uh, no. Actually, I rode like everything. I did slope for a minute too in Mammoth, and I think I stopped competing in slope when I was like fifteen. I got fifth at the. Burton New Zealand Open in Slope, which I was pretty proud of, and then I called it quits then. But um, yeah, I don't know. And then I just decided to, I liked riding half pipe and um, really liked pushing myself in the ditch. And uh, Mammoth just always had a perfect half pipe ready by, you know, around Thanksgiving. So we'd always just go. And um, yeah, a lot of good memories over there. Yeah, I have a lot of good memories of Mammoth. <laughs> it's a good vibe. Isn't it? Yeah. It's just even like I even like Mammoth in the summertime. It just always has a good vibe. I went during the summertime for the first time this past summer and it was really weird to me. Why? I just felt like it was a completely different crowd of people. Yeah, that's when the fishermen really come in. Yeah. Yeah, they're a little sketchy. 
Yeah, and all the tourists. You get a lot of like day travelers and backpackers where you're like, where are these people coming from? Yeah. So you end up at the Olympics pretty young in life. I mean, you like I guess in in, in most Olympic sports now, anyway, you end up there as a teenager. The first time you were there was you're a teenager, I feel like, right? Uh, yeah, 19. 19. How old were you when you were? 17. 17. Yeah. So basically, you won pretty much every major competition leading up to it. And ha- ha- how different, like, obviously, you've done X Games, you've done World Cups, you've done all of these things. How different was competing at the Olympics on that world stage compared to even, say, X Games? Like, what's the difference? Honestly, I didn't feel that big of a difference I just kind of saw it as another competition because I think the only difference is that you have so much more pressure on you from other people and a lot more expectation but when it came to the snowboarding I was like whatever wasn't nervous at all I was just chilling I always only get nervous during qualifiers that's that's the only time I get really nervous but during finals I'm always just kind of whatever about it and (laughs) just go with the flow but Yeah, I mean, the aftermath was insane. And, you know, obviously before the Olympics, we have these crazy press days where you just sit in a chair for 12 hours answering the same exact questions over and over and over again. And that part just drove me insane. So I guess X Games, like, I feel like I get a little more nervous at X Games just because I feel like that's the place where I want to do new stuff land new tricks do all that I feel like with the Olympics you just have this pressure of winning and doing well that you're just like all right I'm gonna do the run that I feel like I can put down which happened to be the right run right why you why do you think qualifying so much more difficult for you scary I don't know I think it's just the fear of not making the cut or like I don't know. I <laughs> it freaks me out. It's it's different there because like one big thing from the Olympics to X Games, right, is the format. So yeah. whereas like X Games, you kind of know you're gonna do be in the finals or make it to the finals. Where X or the Olympics brings in these new fist rules and like all of a sudden these like point system where the top six riders will go right to the final and then seven through like forty get like one more chance to just make it another six. So it's like, becomes really like technical and complicated. So they put so much pressure where you're like, whoa, all right. And you don't want to mess up like the main show, right? So it's like, oh, wow. Yeah, yeah I know. I remember at the the Korean Olympics, um, I, I don't do really well. I kind of freak out when there's something new about whatever I have going on when it's snowboarding. Like if I have, you know, obviously new boots, I'm kind of going to be a little stressed, new board all the things you kind of need or even like outerwear if I like have something new on me it kind of like I need to get used to it it takes me a little bit but at the Olympics I think during finals right before finals these guys are going up to everyone and putting those bands around our legs and they were pretty tight and that was kind of messing with me but it was to to like show which how footed you are regular goofy or something I think it was like to I think it was honestly just for stats just to show like how fast you were going or like this and that I think it was like a study I don't know what it was but they were like really forcing you to have that on and I was just like what's the point of having this on both of my legs right now it was kind of weird did you have things on your legs (laughs) no but we had like the ruler police who would come by and like measure every logo (laughs) you had with like a ruler and then they'd be like, no good. And you'd be like, wait a second. And they'd be like, take it off. You're like, but we're just practicing, man. And they're like, no. Because they were like really, they're really into branding there. They take it so serious. Um, <laughs> now you're not allowed to have anything on you. Really? Yeah. Yeah, because when we were there, it was like, they would, it had to be one by like four inches or four centimeters or something. Really? So you'd see all these like really cool, like Olympic Oakley goggles where it would just be like this little baby O, you know? And like, yeah. Oh, how, yeah, um, after the Olympics, you became pretty famous. Things changed. Like, you went from being, like, an action sports snowboard superhero to, like, being on ESPN News and E! News, and you were everywhere. It was cool to see, like, you know, but, like, obviously that was pretty hard, like, obviously life-changing, and how was that? Yeah, I don't know. I wasn't expecting that at all, and I 
still don't really know how I feel about it because the whole fame thing isn't really my cup of tea. Um, I like to just keep things low key and like do what I love and that's ideal. But um, I just remember talking to, you know, everyone else that had been to the Olympics and they were always like, strike when the iron's hot or whatever, like do as much press as you can, like really get in there because no one's going to care and af like afterwards, like a week after. So I kind of went in with that same mentality, like, oh, this is going to be chill. I'll just do a couple interviews while I'm there and it'll blow over in like a month, which did not happen. And I was kind of thrown off guard and I didn't know what to do with myself. I ended up hiding in my house for probably two months because I was afraid to go outside. Yeah, you came out of the 2018 Olympics is like the, 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 you got more, you were the most famous person that came out of the 2018 Olympics. I feel like you got more press and people talked to you about you more than anyone else that went to those Olympics. So that would definitely make you want to lock up for two months. Oh, forever. I mean, it's a different type of fame, right? Because I think like coming up as snowboarders, you look at this core group of people that you ride with and like those are the people you want to gain their respect or like gain kind of like this infamous fame with them. But with the Olympics, it's like, so many people that never pay attention to snowboarding ever all of a sudden like somehow know who you are can recognize you just through like reading newspapers like i remember like after i left salt lake it was like a whirlwind and then it was like i'd be like sitting down and it'd be like like this old table of like you know grandmas would be like that's so and so yeah. and it was like what what's going on like these are not the people you'd think pay attention you know and that's where like the the fame can be a little overwhelming right where it's like you can't hide anywhere yeah like i would go to corner bakery i don't know if you guys have been there it's so good um but there was one down the street from my parents house and i would go and would just come back out because everyone that was standing in line would turn around and just stare at me and i would just run to my car and like go home it was so scary because it's like the other thing too is it's not just hey nice to meet you anymore it's hey can i get a photo it goes on online and it's like what if I have a pimple on my forehead? Like, I don't want to, I don't want people to see that. It's embarrassing. And it's like, I just want to casually go and like, just casually get my stuff and like go home and it'd be like chill. But it's not like that. I mean, I'm not saying I hate my fans. I do. I'm really, really appreciative for everyone who supports me. Um, I just feel like when right after the Olympics, just not expecting it at all. And that being my new normal was a lot to adjust to. But I think when you also get to that fame, it's not just your fans that are it like, yeah, you obviously care about your fans and always want to help them out. But there are people also just wanting to get a picture because they want to post a picture on Instagram with Chloe Kim. They're not your fans. Yeah. They just seen you on TV. And it's like true. Like the grandma fame's real. Yeah. <laughs> it's a lot. Yeah. Like people would go to my parents' house and like bring them random just food or like things just random things like this one old lady walked up to my house and just dropped off like a mug just a plain mug from like michael's or something i don't know where you buy mugs but it was just like weird i was like why are you coming to my house and giving me the stuff thank you but like what are you doing do you get many like letters is that still a thing yeah you yeah do? that's what i was wondering because i still get letters from like german autograph collectors and like weird I mean, the cool thing around the Olympics was all, like, the kids' support and school stuff. I'm sure you got, like, yeah. hundreds of, like, teachers and whole classes. Like Favorite. And have you, have you written any back? I have written a couple letters back, um, like, especially to, like, kids and the, the autograph collector people. Like, sometimes they'll send me multiple. Like, the same guy will send mm -hmm. me them, you know, a bunch. So I'll just keep those and give those photos to, like, the kids that send me letters. Oh, see, I, yeah. Recycling. I've done a little bit of that. There was like one guy who sent me like the Olympic tickets to the event and it was like he'd already had like Ross and JJ sign them, you know, and I was like, oh, maybe I'll keep the second set. Like, <laughs> Do you get like that? You come out of it. <laughs> like, like, sorry, Mr. I like how Danny's still getting fan mail from Germany. Danny and David Hasselhoff is still huge in Germany. Yeah, huge, <laughs> huge. Big in Germany. Do you get that you come out of a restaurant and come out of somewhere? Because you're, you're living in L.A., right? You yeah. like it? I do. Yeah, honestly, I think it's pretty chill when I'm in L.A. It's just my parents lived in O.C. And I feel like where we lived, it was a very Korean community, which mm -hmm. is a whole nother story. So um, when I'm in L.A., I feel like I'm pretty much left alone. It's just the occasional person will come up to me. But I love it. 
I don't think I could ever leave. Yeah. I love it here. Yeah. Yeah. Me and Danny actually had a really, we, we, we showed up to uh, uh, career. And we had uh, it's Korea. A career. I say I, 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 I'm Not pronouncing his career. differently. I knew he was gonna say that. So, but we showed up, and at the airport, there was a guy dressed like me, and he was the Korean dingo, and he called himself a Korean dingo, and he followed us the whole time we were there. That's sick. Did you get a photo with the guy? He was in the TV oh, show. Multiple oh, photos. My God. They were they were shirt off in the club together. Uh, <laughs> I think he took your shirt off. He took all of our shirts off. That guy. He did take all of our shirts off. He was at every signing we did. He was he he he, he yeah he he raged for sure. But That's there's sick. such a huge like following of the snow sports like in Japan and Korea. It's so cool to see like, you must be so famous there. Have you gone over there at all? Um, I've been to, I went to Japan right before the Olympics because, you know, with all the qualifying and stuff, it was just a lot of half pipe riding and I, mm -hmm. I just needed a detox. So I went to Aomori Springs. I don't know if you guys have been there. Um, Is that with the monkeys? No. Oh, okay. I wish. I, they There's might have hot monkeys. tubs with like monkeys. You can I just would never get in a hot tub with a monkey. That sounds stupid. <laughs> I've done a lot of stupid things in my life. That sounds stupid. <laughs> It's, right? <laughs> I don't know. It looks pretty cool. It looks cool. But I guess I they will it. steal steal your clothes when you get in, so you got to be careful. Yeah. Hey, does it weird? Does, does it weird you out? Do you ever like come out at restaurants or anything, and there's people there holding your picture, or your face to sign? Have you had that? Someone asked me to sign their baby one time, which kind of threw me off. Whoa. Did you well, do it? <gasps> no. Yeah. With That's a good. sharpie. <laughs> I mean. Oh my god! <laughs> no way. She, I don't, I don't think she was like in the right state of mind because I don't know. But so I you, didn't do it. You decom, <laughs> you decompressed. You had a life, you had old, like a life altering change moment in your life where you were, it just elevated. You know, it's crazy because Dan's been through that process too, and you kind of shut down. And then it was kind of like, I, it's actually kind of funny because I got a call from your agent, Lol, when when you were going about to go to Princeton. Cause he would want to get a hold of Danny, cause Danny grew up in New Jersey, and he was like, "I want to talk to Danny, cause I want to find out if there's a half pipe anywhere near there." <laughs> oh my God! Did he really? <laughs> what do you think I was gonna do? Go train on the weekends? <laughs> You've got to stay sharp, right? No, thank you. So where I'm getting at though is, you are at the peak of your career, you're on top of the world, and everybody would just assume that you're gonna put the boots back on and come back out and do the circuit again. Instead, you do probably like what I thought was the coolest move ever, and you decide to go to college. <laughs> I mean, I didn't get to go to prom, so I've got to make up for it in one way okay. or another. You know, like the number one athlete in the world, the face of Nike, face of Monster Energy, gold medal Olympics, face plaster everywhere, courtside games, like, nah, I'm going to not retire, I'm just going to... Take gonna, a sec. Yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go to Princeton. <laughs> Not just any college. I'm gonna go to like one of the colleges where the smartest people in the world hang out. I was like, she's a, she's a, she's not just a genius. She's a G genius. <laughs> yeah, I think a lot of people thought I was gonna retire. I would get so many messages being like, "Are you retiring? When are you gonna announce your retirement?" Like, blah blah blah. It's like, can a girl not just take a break? Like, Jesus, I've been doing the same thing, same contest for so many years since I was 13, literally. I need to like not do that. And then I, I broke my ankle at the open. So I was like, I feel like I should just let my body heal. I probably have these, a bunch of stuff going on in my body that I just has gone unnoticed and thought it'd be smart for me to take some time off. And while I do that, go get an education in Jersey. That's so cool. Do you know that he's in college right now too, right? Are you? Oh yeah. wait, I think I knew that. Yeah, no, I am in college. I'm two classes away from my associate arts degree. Amazing. Which I'm pretty proud of. Congrats. It's not, did they, he, 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 he tried. I wouldn't let him in Princeton. He tried. I didn't apply. <laughs> I should have applied right after my Olympic run. It should have been like, that was super smart, I think, on, on your part. Definitely using the credentials at the time when they're most valid. Yeah. I mean, well, it was what, funny, though. And what's that like, though? I mean, going from, obviously, you have, you know, so much going on around snowboarding and that side, but then going in and stepping into, like, a full, full school mind. Dude, what was it like coming on campus day one, like as a freshman? It was really fun. Well, you, you were actually the same age. You you were actually on age to go. Danny was a little late. You were a little late. Well, <laughs> <laughs> he 
He still made it. You were actually on time, on age, to show up to college. Yeah. That's gnarly. With a gold medal. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, you know, when I first got there, like, I was really intimidated because I feel like everyone knew so much about me and I didn't know anything about anyone else. And it just felt like there were so many eyes on me. I was nervous to, like, speak in class or, like, ask questions because I just felt like everyone was just so, like, hyper focused on, like, what I was like and, like, wanted to get to know me. And I, I think I kind of was really just distant from meeting people because I you know I grew up in the same bubble of people my whole life like I haven't really met anyone that doesn't have something to do with snowboarding or the industry so when I went there it was really intimidating but then first weekend I made a lot of friends and then I just kept meeting so many amazing people and it's really nice to have friends outside of you know the industry just not because I hate talking about snowboarding all the time. I love it, but it's also just getting different perspectives about things. And um, yeah, just feel like it made me an open person, more of an open person, if that makes sense. It's, it's healthy, 100% it makes sense. Like when I heard you were doing what you're doing, I was like, oh, she's, she's so much smarter than everyone else. It's like, it's, 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 it was incredible. You know, at, at, and you were at such a young age and the pressure you've had to deal with, like no one deserves, Nobody should have to lock themselves up in their house for two months because they're scared to go outside because of what the world's, you know, looking at them to do and worried about pimples. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's like, that's ridiculous. Like, we should be able to go outside with a huge pimple in our head and not worry about <laughs> grandma and papa's taking a picture with us. You know, like... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, but honestly, college was so much fun. I, I kind of... I'm really happy I went when I did because you're right, everyone, you know, we're all the same age and it just made it a lot more fun because um, I, I always planned on going to college eventually but I'm really happy that I went when I did I think I got the best experience were you on a dorm with like full dorm style like the whole thing <sighs> full dorm style it oh my god where do I even start let's start at the beginning yeah what does the start. room look like what, it, did you have was somebody else in the room with you no thank okay, oh my hey. god thank god I have so much stuff that my roommate would have probably killed me um no, so you have, you go into your dorm. Well, first you check in and there's like balloons and there's a lot of people everywhere. It's really, really stressful. Is it send off moment? Parents are kissing goodbye. Yeah, exactly. Your, your mom and dad were there. Yeah, my parents are there. And then, um, so you go into your room, you just park right in front of the dorm entrances and you bring all the stuff. I was on the fourth floor, no elevator. So I had to carry everything up to my dorm. Um, and <laughs> it was so small. I think it was like, 15 by 15 feet so it was like probably the it's like the size of my yeah. bathroom essentially almost wow pretty really small um and had a tiny little twin bed in there had a desk was able to squeeze a couch in which i was really stoked about um and a closet and that was pretty much it and then you get put into these groups and call them z groups and it's all the kids that live in the same like hall as you in the dorms and so you get in, you put in these groups and then you go to like orientation, go around campus. Like you have people helping you pick out classes, people telling you where your classes are because the campus is huge. I mean, I was in a chemistry class. I was on one side of campus and then I had an English class right after that was on the complete other side. And I just remember sprinting uphill for like 15 minutes because that's Every all the time. time I had. Every time. Whoa. Three times a week. Horrible. How was chemistry? Oh, I dropped it. Why? It was so, it wasn't that it was too hard. It was just that I didn't take AP science like in any way, shape or form. So the f intro chem class was gen, general chemistry. And I didn't really know enough of the basics because I didn't really take an AP chem class and also took chemistry when I was like 15. So the, I just pretty much forgot everything. Um, so I did pretty well when I was in it, but I was studying for it like eight hours a day and I had three other classes I need to worry about so I just dropped it and what was like your what was your favorite class you think that you took that semester I think I really liked I loved my French class because my French professor was also from Geneva I lived in Geneva for a couple years when I was younger you did yeah how old were you eight eight to ten and were you snowboarding there uh yeah during like 
the winter breaks or whatever. I but never I knew went, that. Yeah, I went to like a full on public school, learned how to speak French super fluently, and then I would go snowboarding when we had time off. Um, but you speak French? Yeah. She's. I told you she's the smartest I, snowboarder ever. I told you too. Yeah. No. You. Yeah. I know. Right. <laughs> wow. All right. So you dropped out of chemistry. What did you take up from there? Um, I took this English class that was. They have these classes called seminars, and you only meet once a week, but the classes are four hours long. So you just sit there for four hours. And it's, it's long. Four hours in a classroom is long. It's horrible. I, I, did some, I did some three-hour ones that were like summer classes, and it was like, get me out of here. What do you do? Like and that. the professors are so sweet, but they're just like... You know, yeah, just how much I can't retain three hours, four hours of information like that. It's too much. What's some of the crazy, like crazy college experiences you had? <gasps> oh, <laughs> yeah, we've only partied at, ke- at colleges. Do, do, do keg stands exist? Huh? Do keg stands exist in college? I'm in sure Princeton? they did somewhere, but not where I not went. Princeton. You didn't see any? No. Um, there were, there was a lot that happened. So there was the main campus and then there was the street and the street was where, like where all the parties were. It was literally across the street from campus, but I don't, the university wasn't technically like a, affiliated with the street, but you know, it was a lot of like the big donors and all these people bought these mansions on this one street mm-hmm. and a lot of students who are part of those they're called eating clubs these they're not mansions. frat houses oh, eating clubs they're called eating clubs there's not like frat houses they're called like eating clubs why is that to disguise them not being a frat house no yeah. so basically <laughs> just yeah. let me know if you get confused because this is really confusing uh, no, yeah we're I'm, taking I'm notes in, i get it eating house club that's a frat house <laughs> Okay, so I don't exactly know how it goes, but I'm pretty sure after your sophomore year, you can't continue eating at the dining halls as a student. So a lot of kids, a lot of students will get into eating clubs and there they have like private chefs and then they like cook for you for the meals. And that's like where you go to eat instead of the dining halls. They keep the dining halls for like the first, you know, two year students. Um, so those are the eating clubs, but they also throw these massive parties, like, all the time. Um, I went to a couple. It was kind of a weird vibe, not going to lie. A lot of, like, the same music, and I was just... Yep. But I, I, I like to go out and, like, have fun with my friends. Um, but I think there was one incident where some kid got really drunk and fell and, like, cracked his head open which was pretty crazy and then that place couldn't throw parties anymore because it was really gnarly um they shut down that eating club pretty quick eh (laughs) for like a night he must have eaten shit (laughs) (laughs) but it was so funny like i how does that even because he was really tall like he was a really tall guy so i think when he fell it just was that much more impact um yeah tall guys fall so weird yeah (laughs) tall guys it's just like it takes them forever and then they just like whip and hit their head yeah, last like, moment yeah it's a it's a whole movie watching them fall you don't know what's gonna happen um it'd be a great internet compilation you ever seen that you tall ever guys seen, falling you ever seen that, especially like, at frat the, houses the, the footage of the two halls. giraffes like going down the street and they one falls and they fall over each other it ended up being like a meme anyway it doesn't matter no. if you haven't seen it but watching giraffes fall is hilarious huh. talking about tall people falling giraffes yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, I see that Google it. comparison. Google Giraffes falling over. You guys are, Giraffes you guys falling are over. <laughs> I'm trying to think of like the other weird things that might have happened while I was at school, but Did you have any stalkers at school? Yeah. You did? Yeah. How do we like do, 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 did you have security? Did you like how did you mm. how did you deal with that? It wasn't that scary because I think cuz they were probably pretty nerdy. Like yeah. nerdy Princeton. I'm just thinking of like a stalker, you know? Like yeah, no, I am. Um, Princeton stalker. Like someone sent me a picture of my dorm once, like a fake Instagram account. I was like, Whoa. I'm like, I I'm mean, watching you or whatever. Whoa. And I was like, okay. Okay, so the other thing that like my school had was that there was this website that you could go on and only like students had access to it. But if you typed the student's name, their dorm room and number, everything would show up. So that's how people knew. And I didn't know about this thing because I think a lot of a lot of kids who like go to these schools, they do so much research on the school and like are so involved with everything that happened. So like they all knew about it, but I didn't because I was doing other stuff. How did you pick Princeton? You know, it was like my dream school when I was a kid. I just liked the name of it. And then um, 
I just decided to go there. Well, in New Jersey, you probably go. always dreamed of living in New Jersey. Yeah, big dream of mine <laughs> to live in New Jersey. Have you been to the Princeton I, area? I, um, I actually don't. I mean, I think I've been around there. I grew up snowboarding in New Jersey, but mostly kind of around like the northern part. Yeah. And we would just kind of do like little trips into the, this New York City because that was kind of like the place we would try and get away to as kids to skateboard and stuff. Yeah. But um, no, I haven't really got to spend much time there. I'd like to go back to some of these eating halls. <laughs> you <laughs> should. Are we? Are you going to be going back go. next season or? I don't know when I'll be. Go I'll probably go back. You know, like after these next Olympics, just see what's going on in my life. Um, because I would love to, you know, complete my education and continue so where are to we go at there. With that? How many, what, what, how, how far along are you? I just finished my um, freshman year. Yep. Um, I kind of wish I stuck, just did my sophomore year too, because it was all remote. I could have just gotten it done, but I just, they require a lot of work and a lot of time. So I don't know if I would have been able to do well. Um, so yeah, I have three more years. We'll cool. see. Yeah, I think the um, <clears throat> the online schooling portion of it makes it like so accessible and easy to stay in. Not if you're doing like three or four classes at one time, but definitely good to like do one to two at a time because it's like so easy to just like if they do like the weekly drops, you know, definitely. not if it's not like a full hybrid or you have to be in person. But yeah, I mean, I, I've kind of started to go a little crazy because I feel like I'm not using my brain anymore because when I was at school, it was always just my brain just always thinking always trying to solve this write this do all these assignments but now when now I'm you're not snowboarding. back into snowboarding where all you're doing is basic basic yeah. math right you're like okay three plus three equals seven <laughs> seven plus three uh, yeah equals i mean 10 are you the only 80. girl are you the only girl that does like you're the first girl to learn double corks on the pipe right I mean, I think there were double cripplers that were done, but I think double quirk may, maybe not. I'm sure someone's done it somewhere. How does that feel to, like double corks are pretty serious. I hate that trick. Do you really? I do, I hate it. Are you scared of it or it's just like, you just like. It's just annoying. It's annoying. It's annoying. It's just an annoying necessity. It's just annoying. It's like, just like the roller coaster feeling of having to do it first time like after I, a few weeks. Yeah, like I'd be fine like never doing that again, but. It's kind of fun, like when it works, but sometimes it doesn't work, and it just you launch it to your ass. Oh. <laughs> Did you miss competing? Like after a while, was it something you missed because you were so used to competing? Not really. I think I just I was fine, just chilling for a bit. I mean, I've been doing it for so many years, and you know how that feels. Yeah, it's I mean, it tiring. definitely helps to take a break, right? For for me it was like a, just doing slope style events and not focusing on half pipe and filming was such a like release from the repetition of every weekend you're going to do almost the same contest run and same style half pipe where you kind of it takes a little bit of the fun and the excitement out of it but then to like go and come back is one of those things where you're like holy crap like i'm so good at this like wow i can't <laughs> believe this is like feeling easy in that way i'm sure yeah yeah and you know i think I, I could tell I was tired. Like, my body was exhausted. I mean, you know, one slam is just so much impact. And to think that I was doing that for so long, nonstop, I just felt like I was so tired. So I really took time to take care of myself, you know. Started working out more, starting to eat healthier, and doing something with my brain. And then when I came back, I just felt so much better. I feel like I was in a much better state mental state i feel like i was excited and like stoked to be there again which i feel like i hadn't felt in a couple years and um yeah now i'm like really excited to be back on snow i'm just excited for the next trip i'm excited i think it's so smart for you to bounce in between these things at such high level you know like i could just i can't wait to see like 35 year old chloe kim like <laughs> running the world like i know her <laughs> mm -hmm. We went to her graduation party <laughs> at the eating clubs. <laughs> so, uh, so was, this was your first year competing again, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. X Games was your first competition back. Lux. Oh, Lux was that was right before. Yeah. Whew. What a weird year to come back and start competing, huh? Oh my! So many COVID tests. 
It's insane. I can't. I can't do it anymore. Oh. I'm gonna go crazy. Right? Yeah. There's so many like more. I bet you never thought you were gonna have to come back into a competitive space like that. How's that on the brain? <laughs> like not good. <laughs> apart from having, apart from having a, a pick put in the back of your brain, like <laughs> mentally, like you have to get over so much just to get to the competition. Yeah, like I, I think what COVID started really started in March when everyone started to panic, and that's when I first got back from school because we got kicked out then so I just came back from school was freaking out and then I'm on these calls with the team and they're telling me that you know if you get COVID you might not be able to compete this season like all these things because no one knew what it was like so I didn't see anyone like didn't see my friends I I like made my family get tested before seeing them because I was so afraid of me getting them sick and them getting me sick like because it was just such an unknown thing and that was really hard and when we were going to these competitions it was like you can't hang out with people you can't do this you can't do that you have to test four times a week um it's just like a lot and then traveling was a pain in the ass too because you have all these papers and whatever and people are yelling at you telling you you can't go and it was a lot i kind of went like full karen mode a few times at the airport you went karen mode like almost oh anyone and, catch that uh i hope not but it was bad I was just so over it, dude. Yeah, it was so much to deal with. It's so like much. added, so much more added pressure. So much. And it's like, it was just frustrating because it's like no one really knew what they were doing, like at the airport, for example. Like, so you would check, try to check in. This person's telling you you can't check in because you can't go to Switzerland. But then the homies are like on talking to the guy a few rows over and he's like checking them and taking their bags. So I was like, what is happening? So it was always so stressful to go anywhere. But I'm happy it's getting better now. I think it's getting better. Like, I, I heard some horror stories over the weekend for a couple of weeks ago for skateboarding. There were some Australian kids that came over there, and Australia's been on full lockdown. Like, I haven't been home in 15 months and whatnot, but like, the, 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 the kids came over, um, the coach had had symptoms, and then three of the kids ended up with COVID. Two of the kids needed to skate this contest to get points to even qualify for the Olympics and end up with COVID. So they weren't allowed to compete and they weren't allowed to get the points. So they won't even be allowed to so it's compete in Japan. So it's just like that you, there's all these random horror stories that will continue to happen. And that's super unfortunate. And all, all, all the stuff that we've seen in this past 12 months, Canadian kids get it. Their coaches get it. These kids don't compete. Kids get on the news. You know what I mean? Like it's like for doing the wrong thing or blah, blah, blah. And it is, it's gotta be stressful. You know, it's like we've heard like these things. We're gonna we're continuously having to, to to deal with that, and it's it's uh it's it's another hurdle you've got to get through with all these other hurdles. You won every contest this year, right? Yes. <laughs> you said that. So. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Was it three years off competing or two years? Uh, it was just like. I don't even. I think it was just like one season. So it was one season, one, one full season. season. One so it's full one full seasons, go around. Yeah. So you took. Um, Who was it? Yeah, it was just yeah, one right? full season. Yeah. Wow, and won every contest. Did you win every qualifying? Uh, I I think I think I'm good. Like t I'm think I'm qualified. They won't really say it, but I think I'm good to go. Um, I, I, I only say it like that, like, because I, I wasn't expecting to podium, let alone win, just because I, it, really? was, it was just a, yeah. Are you sure? I, I swear, like, I, I just kind of went into it, like, whatever. Um, locks was really hard for me mentally. I, I kind of had a panic attack before dropping in because I was so anxious because I have all these people coming up to me and being like like telling me like oh you're still you're gonna win like blah 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 you're still whatever like people expecting this from me i'm like i came back from a pretty bad ankle injury and also i took a full season off i don't know what i'm doing i only had pretty much one training camp to get all my tricks back in which is in sauce and then now i'm expected to win these events so kind of was just like whatever it's crazy you say that expected to win yeah that's gotta be a lot that's a lot that's just a lot to deal with in itself it sucks it's like come on but that's what happens when you're the best yeah but it's like i don't i shouldn't be expected to do anything nope you're 100 percent right like <laughs> like let me just 
you know just do whatever and it's like i think all, there's a lot of stuff that goes into that i feel like obviously with sponsors and like other people oh they just want you to win all the time and then you have like just feel that pressure on top of it i don't know it, it was a lot but i'm i'm really grateful that i was able to come back and really grateful my ankle wasn't bugging me too much till the end of the season and um i'm just really happy with how it went and yeah Let's talk about injuries, you know, in your body, because you've said that quite a lot and you've even said it in interviews and me and Danny were talking about it on the way here today of like a lot of people don't know how, 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 how beat up the, your body can be and is from doing all these things and that A, you're expected to win and, 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 and that's something that you're dealing with. But not only that, like you're not at 100%. You probably haven't been at 100% for a long time. Danny was saying you're winning these competitions this year and cameras are off and then you're limping away oh, yeah I think <laughs> I don't know where I do that to myself but um I just when I'm having fun like when I'm doing something I love I swear it's just straight morphine like I don't feel it it's I don't feel it and then the minute I take my snowboard off it's like oh wow this actually really hurts um world champs this past season in Aspen I before the contest, I was just doing a run, whatever, kind of warming up, and I fell on a switchback three, which like doesn't really happen, and then I completely jammed my ankle, and I was bummed for the rest of the contest, but it was towards the end of practice, so I just decided to do it. And then that went well, and then we had our qualifier right after that, like our first official Olympic qualifier, and I kind of had to stay for that one. And so I didn't practice at all during that week, just rode for qualifiers and finals and somehow pulled it off. I was there, I saw this slam. It was it was pretty brutal, the switchback three. Yeah. You kind of landed like toe side and just like full, full board out. Yeah. And it was like, oh my God, I thought you like hit, hit your face or something because it was like straight to yeah. the face. And I think like one thing people really don't get to see is like a, like a lot of that behind the scenes where, you know, yeah, you're so gifted and you're so talented in the snowboard, but you work really, really hard to be where you're at and to keep up that level. And a lot of that has to deal with sometimes, right, pain and, like, going through horrible slams, but then kind of rebounding back, you know? Yeah. Yeah, I feel like I've... I feel like every season I deal with some type of injury during a contest. I don't know what it is, but, you know, at X Games, for example, I fell on my first run and all my ribs on my left side had popped out. So I, like, couldn't really breathe. So before my runs, I would just literally hold my breath and just do it. And I was like... Okay, like this is this is today's challenge. I'm gonna deal with it, and then I'm gonna go see my PT, and she's gonna hammer them back in, which she did, and it's so painful. But I had fun while I was on a snowboard, <laughs> so it was worth it. <laughs> so your your X Games runs this year, you were doing you you were holding you were holding your breath the entire run. I was just deep breath in, and then it would go down. What thirty seconds of holding my breath? I might have let it out a little bit, but. I, that's what I tried to do because I don't know if you've gotten ribs come out of place, but you can't breathe with that. It hurts a lot. I cracked a stone once and then like cracked the middle and then three ribs popped out. Yeah. It was the worst probably three months of my life. Yeah. So the fact that you and I sat around and did nothing, the fact that you're competing in the games <laughs> <laughs> the next day and then getting your ribs hammered back in <laughs> is... Savage. I have a video of her doing it. You can hear it. It like is crunchy. It like crunches back in and it's the most disgusting sound ever. <laughs> I'll give you guys a listen. I want to listen. Sec. What's the worst injury you've ever had? Probably my ankle. Yeah. I'm not going to lie. And does that still bother you today? It doesn't unless I piss it off. So if I jam it a little bit, yeah. it's done so it'll get swollen. But I think it's. I have some metal in there and I think it's still kind of healing. It was a pretty not chill. It was like a kind of a gnarly surgery, not gnarly, but for me, it just felt like a lot. I was in a cast for two months and the splint for like four, three weeks or something. It was a lot for me. And obviously the rehab was awful because it's your foot. You can't do anything. Um, so I'm still working on it, but it's definitely a lot better. But I think it might be something that might irritate me for a few more years. Is it true that you might not, you might stop competing after this next Olympics? Is that, is that a thing that's out there? Hmm. You know, I don't know. I, I would love to do another one. Definitely. 
Um, I just think we'll see how it goes. I kind of want to go with the flow and see how I'm feeling, how my body's feeling. Um, you know, maybe I want to go do stuff in the backcountry more or kind of maybe not compete for a little bit. We'll just see what happens. Um, but, you know, in, an, in a perfect world, I would get to do everything. I would get to do, you know, go in the backcountry and also be like full time competitive half pipe snowboarder and then like come back and spend time with my family. But I just feel like. It's a lot to manage and also the whole Olympic process is gnarly to go through. So it's, I would just really want to see where I am mentally, um, but I would love to do another one. And as of now, I'm still kind of trying to figure that out, but I think I'll know after this next one. Yeah. Yeah, and you'll be at a good age then too, you know? Yeah. I'll be like 25, yeah. I think. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> That's not all. Like That's not old. A quarter of a century. That don't think of it like that. I can rent a car for cheap though. There at twenty five. Yeah, that's that's a step up. Yep. There we that's go. A step up. I forgot about that. It used to you can't <laughs> under twenty five you just really can't rent cars. Like the down payment's crazy, right? It's insane. No, getting a car is impossible. I remember like when we were going to Aspen because I wanted to fly and rent a car and my boyfriend's twenty three and we were looking at rental car options and I could get you know, it was like snowing in Aspen. It was during winter. Yeah. I was like, I don't know. Just like the weirdest, like two wheel drive, horrible cars that would not do well in the snow was all we had. Yeah. So I just ended up not getting a car and Ubering everywhere, but I'm excited. Uber everywhere. <laughs> they do make it easy now, right? With the Uber and everything. It is weird that they make you wait so long to like Everything's rent a car. Now. You don't do anything. You just have to get on your phone. <laughs> yep, you can get picked up. It'll take you anything you need. You can you can order anything you need to your house. It's you don't need to leave. And when you need to leave, you still. It's a great world we live in. Just this whole other shit we're dealing with is a little weird, but whatever. Mm -hmm. You know, just another thing we got to deal with. <laughs> What's your plans this summer? Um, I have a lot of friends coming to visit me. From That's school. nice because we weren't allowed to visit people forever. Yeah, I know. Yeah, no. So my college friends are coming to visit me. Actually, on Monday, one of my best friends from school is coming. She's from New York, so I'm gonna spend time with her. And a few of my other friends are also coming afterwards. Um, but I think I'm just gonna, you know, work out, get in good shape, um, have some fun, go to the beach, and go for a swim, like learn how to surf, maybe. You've never surfed? I have, but I just almost drown every time, so I try not to do it. But didn't you grow up by the beach? Yeah. And you just never surfed. You, you grew up by the beach and became the world's best snowboarder and <laughs> still live by the beach and don't get in the ocean? So my parents are Korean. Um, and in Korea, being tan is just like a no-go. Why is that? It's, I, I don't know, they like really like the pale look. So, you know, so taking that into consideration, my parents would be like, would never go to the beach because my mom didn't want to get, you know, tan. Um, my dad just didn't like it either. He thought it was gross. So I just never went to the beach with my family and I'd go with my friends. But I feel like I wish I learned how to surf when I was like six and didn't really, wasn't really scared of sharks or anything. Yeah, they're there. Danny used to always, I just have a place in Malibu and he'd go um, stand up paddleboard in front of my house and he'd go around this rock. And he said every time he'd go around this rock, he'd see sharks. Yeah, I swear. And I'd be by myself <laughs> in the water. And I'm like, oh, wow, that's like a big fish. That's not a fish. Dingo's like, I never see sharks out there. They're all dolphins. And I'm like, that's not a dolphin, man. And then I was like trying to get back in and fell off the board in the wave and was like, thought I was going to get eaten. Oh, <laughs> But I did start learning how to surf like just in the last two years. And one thing I will say, like after like a month or two of really being in the water, you start to lose this fear of being eaten by sharks. I don't. I, listen, I, 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 <laughs> I love think. the ocean, but every time I duck dive a wave, I have my eyes wide open and I think a shark's going to eat me. So the whole time I'm out there, in. I think I'm going to get eaten. But it is very peaceful. Like the ocean is peaceful. He surfs now. He's, he, he surfs with gummy sharks in Florida. Yeah, lots of sharks. I'm so but scared. I like to think of like I just really like to surf in numbers. That way, like if I do get eaten, someone sees it. Your chances. But then also, off. there's like three other people in the water that will like <laughs> hopefully get eaten before me. I don't know. It's bad, but I think it's like strength in numbers. 
strength in numbers. Or it's like gambling in a way, you know? <laughs> yeah. It's better to have like a 25% chance of being eaten than 100. That's true. That's true. Are you going to make uh, your snowboard this summer? Um, I don't think so. I, I don't think I'm going to go to HUD. Um, but I think hopefully maybe go to New Zealand if they decide to open up but I don't know if they will I don't think they'll let anyone in yeah I don't think they'll let anyone in so if that doesn't happen then I'm gonna stay here and watch it'll be the best snow season ever in New Zealand definitely mm -hmm. <laughs> I love it there it's just so beautiful and it's so much fun yep water bar uh, is there anything like on your snowboard you want to learn that you like in your head you can visualize but you've never done it I actually learned something while I was in Kranz it's really excited about okay um, She's not going to tell us. I got that straight away. I saw it, so I think I know what it is. Oh. I don't know. Yeah, oh. I think I, I like, saw it. I'm it. just, I'll but just tell you. We keep it on the DL. You. We got to keep it, it on Let's the DL. Keep that for the Olympics. Okay. We want to win. You know? We want to not just win. We want to smoke them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, but I think I'm going to hold off on learning anything else. Maybe, like, maybe I'll try to get the double perfect, but... It's just like a lot of effort. What do you mean you one. don't have it perfect? It's just really inconsistent because I... Let me start here. I didn't learn it into an airbag. So no. I just did it on snow. Savage. So um, I think, you know, the benefit of using an airbag is that you can kind of correct it as you go and with no risk at all um, for the most part. And I just didn't do that because I hate airbags. I've seen so many people get gnarlier injuries on an airbag. So I just decided to stay away from it. Um, so I just went and learned it on snow. Just one day I was doing a bunch of crippler sevens and I was like, whatever, just sent one and it went pretty well. And I landed it. And, um, but now it's just doing it the way that would make it perfect is really hard to do because I'm already doing it a certain way. So, um, and I've, I tried them this pot, like early season in copper and I got a couple the right way, but it's just like, like, what am I going to, I don't know where to put it in my run in the first place. Like the run I have in mind and second, it's like, I feel like doubles are getting old now, you know? It's definitely cool to see like style really coming back into it. And I think I noticed that a lot towards like the end of the season and like seeing you kind of switch up your run and drop it in with like big backside threes and stuff and mm -hmm. like a switch technical like development within like you know female and male riding is like cool to see that it's going a little bit further away from just flip 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 you know and like you having I think that ability to where like you are starting to feel confident in your riding but also having that confidence to change your style a bit too which has been really cool yeah thank you appreciate it it means a lot coming from you um i i was kind of sick of doing my same run because i've done that run for so long and it was just getting really boring and um i think i just wanted to switch things up a bit and i think i think the reason why competitive snowboarding got really flippy for a moment was because that was what was getting rewarded in contests and a lot of people are just you know straight contest writers and I think what kind of started to happen is that I feel like the judges kind of got sick of that stuff just like because everyone kind of end ended up doing the same exact run just like in a different way Mm -hmm. Like, okay, the 12 is going to be first hit, not last hit. Or, like, the 14 is going to be second hit, not the fourth hit. And it just, it's just the different variations of the same runs with the same tricks, right? So I feel like I saw that a lot, too, happening a little bit in the woman's side of snowboarding. So I, and I was a part of that as well. So I was like, I'm not going to do that anymore. Yeah, and I think I saw, like, even a few years ago when, like, some of Danny Davis's last, like, X Games runs and stuff where it was, like, the switch method and, like, this whole other riding and he would put a run down that was comparable, like, amplitude-wise but would be so much more rewarded for actually, like, putting style back into the run, you know? Yeah, definitely. And I think the one thing I see a lot, too, is people don't really know their don't really learn the fundamentals the basics so it's like i feel like as when i watch some of the younger up-and-coming writers it's like cool you can do a front nine but like can you go bigger and they can't or it's like can you do you know like a back three or a switch back three can you spin switch backside and a lot of people struggle with it and it's just 
I think it's kind of gotten to the point where everyone's kind of just learning frontside cab and backside and just like really building those tricks but kind of abandoning everything else like you know style and um, creativity as well as you know just kind of having fun while you're riding too every it's so serious up there I mean you notice that it's so serious up there just like everyone's just like competition and then you get sucked into it too yeah <laughs> what's more serious like more what, 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 what's more of a fear factor uh, being on the Mars Singer or being on the top of the X Games <laughs> honestly probably X Games because everyone's so serious <laughs> like dude what in the world like I don't want to first of all it's pitch black it's like so dark outside because it's we always compete really late at yep. X Games and it's cold and everyone's just like walking around fo so focused and visualizing which is great but like so like athlete-y like, I'm, I'm listening to like Doja Cat you know just like chilling <laughs> <laughs> Doja Cat's fire. I yeah, know. I get that. I'm pretty into her. What do you think everyone else is listening to? Who knows? <laughs> I mean, hopefully it's good. Is it? <laughs> is it cool seeing Danny at the top of the pipe now? It is really cool. I. It's nice to see you up there. Thank you. It's been. Uh, it's been such a rad winter getting to see all the events and where the levels at and men's and women's and then like, I get to like pull people aside and be like hey i would do this like you should work on this and they're like all right yeah and it's just like so fun to be a part of like this level of riding and where you guys are taking it's incredible you know? yeah i mean it's because we never never saw you around until this season it was like I'd see you here and there but now you're like i love that you come to all, like a cicada everything. he just like buried back into the ground yeah exactly for, and then he came back out yeah yeah i had to wait until it was time <laughs> <laughs> Until it really needed me, you know, and I needed it in a way too. Yeah. So we uh, we do this thing at the end here where Danny kind of like does this little lightning round. Okay. Fire questions. You've got like two seconds to answer these, or else he moves on. Yeah, it's quick. Two. It's super quick. quick. Right, Is it like a goes. yes or no? No, no. It's like kind of like a bit more than yes or no. Okay. You can do like you know. Okay. <laughs> you know. <laughs> yeah, anywhere from one to. 72 words is fine. <laughs> One to 72 words. Yeah. And they are graded. We grade so it's like a pop here. quiz, no pressure or Just anything. No. Um, Would okay. have studied for this. You can't study for these. <laughs> if you had your own monster flavor, what would it taste like? Uh, peaches. Perfect. Uh, first thing you do in the morning? Um, scroll on TikTok. Sick. I'm more the Instagrammer, but... Yeah, because she's, she's Gen Z. How many like, followers like, do you have on TikTok or subscribers? Like 35K. Like, I don't po really post on you it. You just look on TikTok, right? I just like That's what people do. TikTok don't use it. They just go there to look at stuff. Okay, but Instagram just gets kind of depressing sometimes. It's so depressing. It's, it's like, the same thing. It's everybody's posting their fake life. And the whole stories thing downgraded it. I feel like everyone yeah. just like posts the stories. And then you're like, I missed it. What happened? You're like, it's not there anymore. Yeah. No, it's like it's, it's really sad. Like I, I actually deleted Instagram for like three months. Cool, that's gangster. And now cool. I just never go on it anymore. Yeah, yeah I did that with Tinder. <laughs> <laughs> okay, um, what's your go-to <laughs> trick in the pipe? Um, 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 um back three. Back I three. I love that trick now. It's um, my baby. What is the f your favorite place you've traveled through snowboarding? Uh, bald face. Wow, good powder, huh? Love it. Um, your most treasured possession? Um, ooh, I don't know. I don't know this one. Do you have any pets? Yes, I have a dog. What kind is it? I have an Australian Shepherd. I she love could your be dog. my most treasured. Uh, yeah. Really? Yeah, she's my most treasured. She's oh. cool. What's her name? Reese. Oh, Reese. She's so cute. Glorious what a, name. It what is. a broader. Um, favorite comfort food? Um, French fries. <laughs> Good animal ball. style. What do you dip them? Yeah, oh, animal, animal style. Animal style. Oh. Yeah. Let's get some of that. Yeah. You can get that on the way home. <laughs> Good. Um, what are you going to do after this interview? Go home and clean my disgusting apartment. Oh, uh, just laundry everywhere or what? Every, stuff everywhere. Literally everywhere. Um, that's all the questions I have. You've, you've got a perfect 100% on yeah. this one. Yeah. Chloe Kim, we appreciate you here at Monster Energy, and it's been awesome 
to watch you grow since that day we met with Steve Aoki in the airbag <laughs> and you become a superstar. It's been cool to watch. So keep doing you and don't change. We love you. You're amazing. Mm-hmm. Keep it up. Thank you. Thank you for and having me. enjoy the ride. I will. I'm, uh, yeah, I'm loving it again, which is great. <laughs> cool. You should enjoy it. We're going to be will. looking forward to next winter and you got so many supporters around the globe. And you got two huge fans right here. Yeah, and when we're old and frail, like grandma and grandpa style, we'll still be bugging you. <laughs> Please <Thank> do. You. <laughs> Rap. Unleashed with the Dingo and Danny. Fueled by Monster Energy.